What's up guys? So today's video, I am finally excited to tell you guys that I am installing the QTP electronic cutout on my truck. So you guys are going to see how exactly I installed that and what's involved in that install. I'm actually recording this after the install. So there were a few hiccups that I encountered installing that. It wasn't quite as straightforward as I had anticipated, but it did all fit. It did go on and didn't require any welding, which was nice, but you guys are going to get to see exactly how to install that and also its operation. So um, let's go ahead and get into the install on that. Here's the truck, 2014 Ram 1500 Sport Edition, and obviously has some customization to it. So here is the parts that we're gonna be installing. Here's the QTP stuff. Ironically, this stuff is all kind of sold separately, which is kind of a little bit strange, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So I opened it to make sure I had everything because uh, they don't give you everything completely. So that's what I wanna show you guys. So this big box here, is one of the kits and i'll list all the part numbers and stuff you guys want to do this this is this part number five two zero 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 nine and they didn't help me out with any of these parts i bought all this stuff with my own money so um if you guys like it or not as far as the parts <laughs> don't feel obligated to you know buy this stuff but i just bought it because i thought it was a nice kit but yeah all paid for with my own money so here it is this is the actual y pipe portion of it and if i can get it out here with one hand this is basically what you're gonna see. So there's basically this Y pipe here. And of course it's flanged already and it's ready to be bolted on. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to weld anything, which is nice. It already has this hanger in the factory location and it's stamped here. Hopefully you guys can see QTP. And this is where the electronic cutout portion of it's gonna go. As far as in here, I don't know if I can get the light angle to work for me. But that's the kind of uh, cut portion it looks like in there. It's not too bad. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's not too bad, but it's not like a port and polish look or anything like that. It's a little bit raw inside, but obviously it's gonna get the job done as far as opening up the exhaust and making it free flowing. So that's that portion of it. And then in this box here, we have the actual electronic cutout portion. So this is actually going to be our electrical parts. This is the hardware. Of course, two clamps. They have the block off plate if you want to block it off. And this gasket, they give you one gasket. That's what I'm going to get into in a second. And there's your three bolts for, of course, this three bolt flange. Underneath that, we have this. which is our wiring to come from the cutout and they give you this switch. So this switch is if you just want to toggle it manually, you know, sit there and push it this way or, you know, open or closed. This switch is incredibly stiff. I've never seen just a stiff switch for such a puny cable, but um, it is what it is. I'm not gonna be using it anyways. And here's of course the money, the QTP cutout, electric cutout. So it looks pretty good. Um, hopefully sturdy. You're supposed to apparently lubricate this thing once a month just to keep it uh, from, I guess, gunking up with carbon or whatnot. But that's that portion. And here's what I want to get into. So <clears throat> all electronics aside, basically they tell you that you should, in the instructions, they tell you you should have this um, turn down to be able to aim the exhaust towards the ground and not just straight out at your, your frame rail or something like that. So they tell you to buy this. This is a separate part number. This is 11300, three inch adjustable turn down. But what they don't tell you is that there's not a gasket to go. They give you one gasket. So you're gonna have the gasket between this and that flange over there, right? So, and then they don't tell you you need another gasket for the other side of this thing. So you end up being a gasket short. So I had to go to AutoZone and just pick up a three inch, um, basically it's a performance three inch gasket so that I have a gasket between this flange and the QTP and then uh, the cutout. And then on the other side, we have this gasket that they supply us. So I guess I can go ahead and use two of those or I might use this one since this one looks a little bit better, but I don't think there's any anything wrong with this one. This one says it's for a collector. So um, it, that probably sees a lot more heat than this thing is going to. So that's that portion. And last but definitely not least is this part. This is the money here that I think makes this kit really cool is 
This is the wireless remote cutout controller. So what this thing is, is basically it's a controller that allows you to install this and have wireless control over the cutout. So it comes with this little box, comes with these two little remotes, you know, open and close, which you can actually program on the home link buttons, which we're gonna do after. But this is basically it. It just needs power and to ground it. And then after that, you basically have wireless control over that cutout, which is nice. The only other thing is this is not a waterproof uh, unit. So I have to run this into the cab to keep it away from the elements. So uh, not the end of the world, but it would have been nice if it was waterproof. So I could just connect it to my battery and be done with it. But we'll have to bring it into the cab just so this thing can stay dry. So this is pretty much it. This is all the stuff. I got a Sawzall ready here because we're gonna have to cut the pipe. But let me get into that stuff and get situated and we'll continue. So the instructions call for, this is basically right after the header, the Y pipe. The Y pipe basically connects to here and the instructions call for 22 inches from this connection to here. So this is 22 inches, I've gone ahead and measured it. So you want 22 inches and the reason being is because this pipe is actually a few inches longer and this is gonna replace this and this is gonna hook into this hanger here. So basically this is a little bit longer, it's giving you enough pipe to fit into here and we're going to replace this section of pipe with the cutout. So let's go ahead and cut this. Okay, so we have a nice clean cut here. We can go ahead and take off our clamp on this side and this is going to be 15 millimeter um, nuts to take off this clamp and then we should be able to take this pipe out of the way. With my truck being a 2014, a little bit older and higher miles, these bolts did snap off the uh, clamp, but not a big deal. Those clamps are like $3 at the store. So let's go ahead and get the other bolt off. I'm assuming it's gonna snap as well, but we're just trying to get this out of here at this point. Okay, for the record guys, this mid pipe or whatever we're calling it is a pain in the you know what to get off. So I ended up saying forget it. I'm not gonna try and salvage it. If I ever wanna go back, I'll just get a, an exhaust shop to just put something back in there. But basically I ended up having to cut a slit in it to get it out. And basically it's a U-shaped clamp and it goes down. And it's, uh, it's one of these ones that basically when it crunches down on the pipe, it makes a bead around it. And it was nearly impossible for me to get that bead undone. So you can see just the hump that it created in the pipe. And the inner pipe is actually has this matching kind of hump in it too. So it had basically formed itself on there and I tried getting it off with, with everything. So I'm, I'm sure maybe you could heat this up or somebody has some tricks of the trade, but as far as just working with simple hand tools and trying to do it here, um, it wasn't happening without me cutting it. So basically I just got creative. I was just very careful and cut across the top and not to cut the inner pipe. And then I just basically chopped it off the end here and uh, basically just made my way and connected the dots. And as soon as I did this, the thing just popped off. It was under a ton of tension. So you guys might experience that. I even tried whaling on the hanger to try to drive this off and ended up popping off the tack weld on this hanger too. So it was just a Mickey Mouse tack weld. So everything's here if I ever decide to, <laughs> to go back to stock or something like that. But um, I think it's just better off just to cut it off and then worry about it later. If it had a nice clamp like one of these ones, right, like it had a clamp and it had like that uh, same as what the QTP is where it has slits cut in the pipe and it's a nice nice uh, joint there, then this would have came off no problem. But with this type of um, clamp around that where it kind of just crushes the pipe, it was almost impossible to get off. So. Anyways, it's off now. Let's go ahead and get this new stuff on and forget about this junk. All right, so we're back under here and slightly off topic, but not quite. As you can see here in the, the Y pipe, the manifold, a lot of guys, uh, not a lot of guys, but I've seen before people actually um, take that and grind that 
that piece out in the middle and they've gotten uh, gotten some results they said it sounded better and it also gave them a little bit more throttle response more peps so if you guys are ever thinking about it maybe now's the time to grind that out and clean that up because that is apparently a restriction right there okay so let's go ahead and get this pipe on here basically you need to put your clamps on before and then we'll be all set to uh, put this pipe on here And you're gonna have to play a little bit of a game here because you basically have to make up some length so you probably have to push your muffler and the rest of your exhaust back to get this slipped into here. Alright, so I am not impressed so far with this QTP kit. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if it's just mine, but I doubt it. I don't know if you guys can see this on the video, but they gave me this oblong egg-shaped pipe, and it doesn't want to fit over top of my mid-pipe going into the muffler. So this is the way it sits, of course, on the vehicle. And on my header, my manifold, it fits okay, but it still wasn't the greatest. But on this side, I've got this kind of egg-shaped pipe, and it's not, I don't know if you guys can see it in the video, but it's kind of, you can probably see right here, it's got this peak on it, and then it goes flat across this way, and it's not uh, not fitting. i got this egg-shaped thing, so I had to go and waste my time going to AutoZone and picking up this uh, pipe expander kit, because I don't have really many tools here where I'm working currently, and uh, I'm going to have to basically spread that open a little bit so that I can actually get it on. It was pretty fun uh, driving over to AutoZone with open headers, but that's another story. So let's go ahead and uh, spread this open and continue, hopefully. Okay, so after using the pipe expander and getting these opened up, it looks like we might finally be able to get this on after just doing some quick test fitting. So now we got our clamps ready and situated. So let's get this pipe on here. Okay, with everything tight, the two band clamps and everything aligned, so hopefully now comes the fun and hopefully as well downhill part of the install which is putting the actual cutout on so hopefully it's straightforward from here guys i'm really hoping because so far it's been a pain but um let's keep going all right so of course we're going to have our cutout we need a gasket to go between that so we're going to do gasket cutout gasket and then turn down With everything aligned, we can now tighten all the bolts. Okay, I'm happy to say, guys, that all the bolts and hardware is complete. Now we're just left with the wiring, and everything is solid down here, so we can go ahead and start doing our wiring, and hopefully that's all straightforward. Okay, so now we can start mounting our harness, of course. This is the harness where it connects, so we're going to connect this here and then continue to run it. So I've decided that getting the wire out of harm's way and out of the heat's way is the best possible. So I am going to immediately flip it over the frame rail. And there's actually holes in the frame rails. So I just snuck a zip tie through and around and I'm gonna follow all the way along here and up into the engine bay. So let's go ahead and get that done. Just a cool little tip for you guys. If you ever see two holes like this or somewhat close together, you can actually feed a zip tie or a tie wrap through them pretty easily. If you kind of make a U shape, with the tie wrap like so. It has a tendency to want to return to that shape. So for example, a U, you hook it in and it should pop through here like so. So you can see we easily got it through and we got our tie wrap here. We can put our wire into it and continue on. Okay, so we basically just followed that frame rail up and then I tucked it up along with the factory PCM and that stuff, all electrical, and then I'm just gonna sneak it across here and behind this liner into the uh, cab where I can connect all this stuff and keep everything watertight. 
Okay, so we're on the driver's side now, guys, and you're gonna see this big boot over here, hopefully. And basically this boot here, hopefully I can get some better light on it for you guys. This boot um, basically goes straight into the cab. You're gonna see this little kind of nipple here that hopefully you can see me moving around with the wire in the way. I'm gonna get this out of the way for a second for you guys. So see this nipple here? That nipple in the bottom there, you can chop the end of it off and feed your wires through, but this wire is um, pretty big. This is the connection that you have to send through. So I'm just gonna make a little incision on the corner of this boot and pass this big piece through. And then we can basically put our other power wires through there or get the power from inside the cab. But this one here is going to be for this. So here's what you'll be looking at underneath the dash. This is kind of the perspective where underneath where the pedals are. And to the left there is where you can see hopefully where we came through. So that's basically our connection there. And we can go ahead and mount the watt, this little box down here, the QTP box. But I'm gonna go ahead and bring my power wire from the battery. I wanna have constant power on this so that I can turn it on or off before I start the truck. So that's why I'm not gonna do it on switch power. I'm gonna do it always on the battery so I have the ability to open or close it before I actually start my truck with constant power. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this red wire through there and then we should be almost done. Okay, so we'll be mounting the box up here. Basically there's a void here. There's a big hole that you can kind of pass a couple zip ties through. And it looks like this is where a clutch pedal would go, so there's a ton of room here. So I'm going to be mounting the box right up here on this uh, kind of piece here, piece of metal, and I'm going to zip tie it around. So let's go ahead and get that mounted. Okay, and they give you two connections for this wireless remote so that it can power two cutouts, but we're only going to be using one. But I don't want power coming across here and shorting out on something, so I'm going to go ahead and electrical tape around it to basically protect it from shorting on anything. Okay, so we're all done in here. I mean, there's not too much to it, guys. Basically, you're gonna have your positive, your negative. The extra wire is gonna connect to your cutout, and this white one is just an antenna, so you can kind of just let it free float a little bit and get some reception, we hope. So that's basically it. I think this is a clean install, putting it up here. We got our wiring, it's out of the way. It's not gonna dangle and interfere with the pedals or anything and we can still easily access it or the fuse if we need to. I'm also probably gonna put another fuse on the other end. This is what comes on it um, standard. They put the fuse on this end. Um, so I'm not gonna chop this wire any shorter. I'll leave this here, but I'll probably put a fuse on the other side of things closer to the battery just in case for whatever reason, if the wire shorts along the way. So that's basically it under here. Let's go ahead and wrap up up top. So this is the finished install guys. Basically under here, you have the red wire. You just put it onto this 10 mil post. Very straightforward, and here's your wires running in. So like I was saying, nothing too complicated. And the excess wire that runs to the cutout, I just tucked in behind this uh, insulation and the firewall. And like I showed you guys before, basically the wire that runs to the cutout just runs between the insulation and the firewall all the way across. Then it runs down, and then it runs across that frame rail. So very basic, very simple. Last but certainly not least, I'm gonna be programming these overhead buttons to basically mimic the remote that they give you, the wireless remotes. So they have open on the left and close on the right. So I'm gonna mimic my first two buttons on the overhead the same. So basically, if you guys haven't already done it to train it, if you touch one of these buttons, you're gonna see in the dash, it says channel one training. So basically what I have to do, and I'm gonna have to put the camera down for a second to do this, but I need two hands, is I'm gonna be holding down the button and holding down this button at the same time until basically it says that it's learned over here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna push these both at the same time. It says channel one training. Channel one trained. So now this should work, and it does. And we're gonna train the second button. So channel two training, we're gonna hold this one. Channel two train. So now this both works. I can hear the motor turning. Okay, so it works the same as remote, perfect guys. These two buttons, I got open here, I got closed there and I don't have to necessarily have this remote on me with when I'm in the vehicle, but if I obviously want to open and close it from outside, then this is where this is going to come in handy. And I'm sure the million dollar question for you guys is, how does it operate? So 
Um, this is a remote, of course, and I chose to make it so that the you didn't have to have the truck on for the remote to work. And I basically wired it straight to the battery. And then, like I said, the reason I did that is so that you can actually open and close it with the truck off before you start it. So for if there's any reason that you wanted to do it remotely before you entered the truck, you could open and close it. So let me go ahead and show you guys what it looks like externally and how that valve operates. Okay, here we are under the truck. You can see that it's closed right now. If I take the remote, hit the open button, you're gonna see it open, of course. Now it's fully open. Hit the close button again. And then it's closed. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up top. So I do promise guys that I'm gonna get you some more sound clips, but I'm working on trying to find out how to get the audio to fully capture the sound on this thing because uh, the camera doesn't seem to want to pick it up too well, but this is the truck running with the stock exhaust and with the flap closed. And if I hit open, hopefully you guys can hear how much different it sounds, but again, I don't think it fully captures it, but that's, uh, that's it open. And then if I switch it back to closed, there, now we're back to bone stock, can't hear anything. But again, like I said, guys, I'm gonna make it uh, another video or more videos, a lot more videos, pulls, drive-bys, all that stuff on the exhaust so that you guys can hear it a little bit better. Okay, so that just about wraps up this video, guys. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing lots of reviews on the actual sound of this thing, drive-bys, pulls, um, you know, standing next to it, but I gotta figure out the audio as far as capturing it. Um, right now, I'm not sure if you guys can fully hear it. Truck's running right now with the stock exhaust and the cutout is closed. And if I sit there and I actually program these buttons like I showed you guys, if I actually push this to open it, I don't know if you guys can hear the change in pitch, but basically now it's open. And if I rev it, I'm sure you guys can probably hear it. As opposed to closing it, Now it's fully closed, and if I rev it, you can barely hear it, so you just hear the intake sound and the stock exhaust. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did find it helpful or you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up for me. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to subscribe for me and hit that bell notification that's beside the subscribe button so you're informed of all the latest videos. Um, as far as this setup, it was a pain to install. I mean, of, of course there's always more difficult things to install. I'm not saying it was the end of the world, but I was of the presumption that it was gonna be pretty simple to just bolt up and you know, kind of go from there. I didn't think I was gonna have to run back and forth between the hardware store or the, the AutoZone store and get some stuff and supplies and, and kind of tailor it to work. So, um, but with that being said, overall, I'm absolutely you know thrilled with this setup. So I love being able to just turn the sound off, turn the sound on, um, and I can adjust when I want my truck to be loud and quiet, and I think it's a perfect setup for these trucks. So let me know if you guys have any questions on this setup in the comments below, I'll be sure to answer them. And like I said, I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos on this setup, so you know, don't, uh, don't be afraid or disappointed if there's not too much you know, sound quality or whatnot in this video or comparisons, because I'm gonna be doing tons of comparisons on the setup, but I just want to dedicate this video to the actual install and what was involved um, in putting it on. So again, guys, thanks for your support so far. Check out all the other videos on the channel, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.